Good evening, folks. Tonight, we're going to discuss the inevitability of the big one in California and which fault it just may emanate from. And all this is coming from new scientific papers coming out on the topic. Now, earthquake models are getting a big shakeup with clues buried in the San Andreas Fault. For over 750 miles, the San Andreas Fault cuts a scar up and down the length of California. There, two colossal tectonic plates, the North American plate and the Pacific plate, are crushing against each other. And you can see that here in the graphic. When these plates give way and slip, the humans living above could potentially suffer a devastating earthquake. Now, the keys to understanding those earthquakes may lie within the false danger zone. Inside the glass walls of a nondescript office building in Menlo Park, a suburb in the San Francisco Peninsula, there lies the regional office of the U.S. Geologic Survey, the keepers of the earthquake hazard data, which you're looking at here. Thanks in part to geologists working in that building, the San Andreas Fault is one of the most studied on the planet. Yet our understanding of how the Earth works under the surface is far from complete. To piece that puzzle together, scientists have been looking millions of years into the past. And what two groups have discovered have been recently published in two papers. One in Science Advances, here, Bridging Earthquakes and Mountain Building in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and another in Geology, History of Earthquakes Along the Creeping Section of the San Andreas Fault. Both published in the last week. Or so. Now, if you didn't know, Menlo Park lies in the shadow of the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's jagged like a dragon's back. And these peaks, well, they're known for their vineyards. They split the sprawl of Silicon Valley from the Pacific Ocean. And in geologic time, these mountains, well, they're toddlers. Many geologists, like myself, think the mountains began to rise just four million years ago. And they sit upon a knot where the San Andreas Fault curves. And geologists, like myself, think that the bend pushes the mountains upward in a long sequence of earthquakes. What exactly about earthquakes causes this area to rise? Well, that remains a little murky, <laughs> so stick with us. Now, fortunately, Bay Area scientists have been measuring earthquakes and collecting rock samples in this region for, de for decades. Not all the data fit together, but they still make the area one of the premier natural laboratories for answering some of these questions. Now, according to George Hiley, or Hilly, a geologist at Stanford, and one of the authors of the Science Advances paper, that group also collected data of their own. They sampled rocks for helium, an element that can tell geologists at what temperature and how long ago the rock formed. Now using that data, Hiller and one of his graduate students, Curtis Baden, and their colleagues, they created a, comp a computational model. And you're looking at that here. one of the first geologic models to rely on dynamic physics to demonstrate how mountains are formed. Now they harness software used by engineers to study how materials stood up to various loads. And as a result, their models could show how rocks might bend, break, and buckle as earthquakes cause mountains to rise. Their simulation showed something surprising. 
at least if the models are to be believed. Much of the mountain building could actually happen between earthquakes rather than during earthquakes themselves. In most faults, moving tectonic plates try to force themselves past each other for years or decades or even centuries. They quietly keep pushing, building up energy at the boundary. Inevitably, well, something snaps. But between quakes, that energy could go into building mountains, according to the simulations. And the data from these simulations, the authors say, can help fill gaps where observations just don't match up. And that, that's pretty groundbreaking. Now fly about 100 miles southeast from the Bay Area to the area near Pinnacles National Park. And the nature of the San Andreas Fault changes. Large earthquakes aren't nearly as common. They're not nearly as common as they are north of this area and further south. And in fact, this is the central San Andreas Fault. And that's because this part of the San Andreas Fault isn't like the others. But what's the difference? Well, here, the North American and the Pacific plates continually crawl past each other without building up stress that results in, well, violent earthquakes. And geophysics, geophysicists call this area a creeping fault. And we've been fed this for over a decade. That this region is a slow slip fault and no large earthquakes can happen in this area. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Now, the central San Andreas can see flurries of relatively harmless minor quakes, and we've seen that. But there hasn't been, been a big one in recorded history, at least for the last 2,000 years. But just because the central San Andreas is a creeping fault today doesn't mean it was always so. And scientists wanted to peel away the rocks and peer into the past on this section of the fault. And that's exactly what they did. Now, they relied on what we call biomarkers. The remnants of living organisms trapped in the rock and chemically transformed by high heat. This is how petroleum and natural gas form. And fossil fuel hunters are very familiar with the idea of using biomarkers as a search tool. Now, what they did was sort of take that idea and turn it on its head, said Heather Savage, a seismologist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and an author of the geology paper. If you have some organic molecules in a fault zone, they would only experience high heat for a few seconds during an earthquake. But those few seconds, it can get really hot. So the team should be able to see some reactions taking place. Now, drilling deep almost 10,500 feet beneath the surface, 3,200 meters for others, these scientists found biomarkers that indicate a rather violent history of the calm section of the San Andreas, the green zone. The scientists found evidence that at least 100 quakes, some potentially as high as magnitude 7 on the Richter scale, stronger than the 1989 Loma Prieta and 1994 Northridge quakes in California's recent memory. As far as the scientists knew until this work, they didn't know that there would be such large earthquakes this far into the past in the creeping section. So that's a wake-up call if you think you're safe in the green zone. You're not. Now, these quakes might not have happened anywhere from a few thousand to 3.2 million years ago. Savage and her colleagues are now seeking to put finer date on these quakes. But it's a sign that the fault is nowhere near as placid as his might have been purported. If it could violently rupture in the past dozens of times, 
The conditions exist for it to violently rupture again at any moment. Now, understanding the history of the San Andreas Fault isn't just about creating a picture of what California looked like when the ground sloths and saber-toothed cats roamed the earth. Because this fault now cuts past two North America's largest urban areas. And its earthquakes put tens of millions of people at risk right now. Now, geologists hope their research can, behind the walls of that USGS office, inform better assessment of how earthquakes can threaten buildings and lives. When tectonic experts evaluate earthquake hazards in a particular area, they consider a few different types of data. They look at satellite measurements of Earth's shape, past earthquake patterns, or long-term history of a fault. Sometimes, such as the Santa Cruz Mountains today, those data don't agree with each other. And Hiller hopes that the group's model can reconcile those disagreements by showing how these data connect to the same processes. And the Central San Andreas research could add nuance to Central California's risk models, because in fact, they've been claiming that this portion of the fault is safe when in fact it is not. I would like to think that our work can inform that, in fact, we do see earthquakes and evidence for many earthquakes in the slow sip, slip section, Savage says. And the mainstream is now reporting on it. They've been reporting on it all week, but is anyone listening? That's my question. And how, how about the Hayward Fault? We're not even talking about that. We just talked about the San Andreas. Scientists are now saying a massive earthquake could strike the Bay Area at any moment along the Hayward. The question is, is anyone in this area ready? Well, I doubt most people are. A 3.9 magnitude earthquake shook the North Bay early Thursday morning. The quake struck at 3.40 a.m., 12 miles northeast of Heldsburg, in the Geysers area of Sonoma County. This is all according to the USGS. But the so-called big one could happen at any moment. And seismologists are most concerned about the Hayward Fault, which cuts through the most heavily populated area of Alameda County. The Hayward Fault produces big quakes on average of every 150 years, according to the historical data. And the last large trembler on the fault was a 6.8 magnitude back in 1868. That's more than 150 years ago. And some estimate a 7 magnitude quake today would kill hundreds if not thousands of people instantly, and cause billions in damage. Now you may, may be asking, how do I prepare for an earthquake? Well, it's pretty simple. You can be prepared for no electrical or water surface forever. So that's the first thing. You can create an earthquake kit with food, water, and gear for at least three days so you can get out of the area. You should all have a combination weather radio, flashlight, and hand crank charger for cell phones at the ready. Have a cash reserve. Know where the shutoff valve and tool are for your natural gas line. I can't believe they said this. Secure your bookshelves to the walls. How about you just get out of Dodge? Now, one thing you can do is create an emergency go bag for when you do go. Let's see if we can get that in there. All right, so what you're going to need is a first aid kit, cash, one set of clothing, a blanket, a crank style flashlight, glow sticks, a whistle. How about a battery operated radio? That sounds like some a good plan. 
non-perishable food, water, goggles, hand and feet warmers, rope, big black trash bags, multi-use knife, dust masks, duct tape, plastic sheeting, copies of important documents, paper street maps, toiletries, those unmentionables, a copy of your ID, sticky pad, pen and pencil, antibacterial hand wash, comfortable sturdy shoes, leather work gloves, three pairs of undies and socks, and what you need for your pet. And we call this, well, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance, especially during a major earthquake that no one currently is able to predict. That's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. All the events that we mentioned will happen. There will be a major earthquake on the Hayward. There will be a major earthquake on the San Andreas. There will be a major earthquake on the Cascadia Fault. Will you be ready? We hope so. Be safe. We love you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And keep up with the current science on what's going on in the world over at Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Be safe. We love you. Mm -hmm.